But first, you might imagine that living in the Scottish countryside would be a tranquil experience. But when it comes to new housing development, tension and conflict can result. When Ewan went to investigate a new housing development in Kinrosha, he had no idea how heated the issue would become. The once sleepy village of Karen Bow is no more. Residents are up in arms over a development which they say is putting their homes at risk from flooding. And they invited Landward to come and hear their fears. But when we tried to keep our appointment down an access road shared with the building developer, things got difficult. Will you take your hand off this camera, please? You're breaking this equipment. You broke it. Can you explain to these gentlemen that we'd like them to film from outside? Sorry, take your hand off the camera. And Mr Wilson wasn't finished yet. He started our car and reversed up the drive, hitting a workman on the way. These gates went up this morning, only when the builder heard that we were coming to film and to interview the local residents. We're not allowed access. The residents aren't allowed access. They're barricaded in behind these fences. The police are here. Our cameraman's had the camera ripped off him. Our car has been commandeered by the builder. We've been threatened physically. And at the moment, it's a bit of a stalemate with the villagers locked behind the gates. We've been escorted here by the police for our own safety. And uh, it's all getting a bit nasty. So we're basically a bit of a standoff. Uh, there's more police on the way. There's more councillors on the way to sort out the access. And we just came to film a wee story about flooding. What the residents wanted to talk to us about was this stunning development. Planning permission was originally rejected by the local council. It was appealed to the Scottish executive, which approved the development. The neighbours believe these buildings have put their houses at risk because the buildings will divert flood water into their homes. We have a development which is up in the air. That is effectively a dam, okay? Now, according to floodplain guidelines, you can't do that. The three-acre field has 18 inches of concrete over the whole field, and that field was the sink for this whole floodplain area. So he's, he's destroyed the, the, the natural floodplain. What you're looking at there is the bottom of my garden, and in, behind that hedge is my house. There's now a burn running down the side of my property now until the last six months that burn didn't exist. There was no running water there. And what's happening here is they're, they're building on, there's natural springs underneath here, there's a whole, the whole sort of nature and water drainage is being destroyed. Don't you worried though, the, the fact that the houses are here, the water's going to run off quicker? It's going to run off quicker somewhere else, it's going to start flooding areas that were never flooded in the past. The Scottish Environment Protection Agency, which has responsibility for flood issues, didn't launch any objections to the development plans because they said they weren't aware of any risk at the time. Now they admit there may be a flood risk. Naturally, the villagers are concerned, but they believe the developer's attitude has inflamed a difficult situation leading to confrontation and standoff. He becomes very aggressive. He swears, he threatens. What form do these threats take? Uh, both my wife and I have been threatened physically. I was threatened to have my face smashed in. Might have been an improvement, but this... And my wife was, was threatened with physical violence also. He is a very intimidating person um, and has been before in the past to me over the phone. Um, gladly it wasn't face to face, but um, over the phone he's been very intimidating to me. He basically told me to move if I didn't like it, just get out. And it was a bit, oh, a bit scary to be honest. I had just had a baby, so you know I was in the house myself, young baby, vulnerable, and he's, he's speaking to people like that. Individuals have challenged the developer when he's maybe stopped access for a day because he's got lorries on the access road, and he basically just tells them to go away. And when they say you can't do that, they've got rights of access, guaranteed rights of access in their title deed. Then he just threatens them. Even today, I don't know what rights he has to stop up the access to members of the public. So why did the gates go up that very morning? To prevent people like you from filming and antagonise the situation and wandering about unsupervised. If you tell me what information you need, I'll get that information for you, I'll let my solicitor know the answers to the questions and then he'll take it from there. In his statement, Simon Wilson denied any allegation that residents had been threatened or intimidated. He stated that all necessary consents had been obtained for the building work at Pitcairney Carambo and no objections had been raised by the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, either to the execution of the works or the temporary site compound being used for storage of plant and materials.
In respect of residents' access issues, Mr Wilson stated that in the interests of health and safety and during execution of the building works, the company had attempted to safeguard all visitors by operating an escort system through the area during the business day while plant and machinery was in operation. Appeals to the local authority and SEPA for mediation and clarification have fallen on deaf ears. Health and Kinross Council has been absolutely abysmal in monitoring uh, and controlling this man. Uh, SEPA, who we've invited three or four times to, to come here, have refused to do so. The Scottish executive, they gave permission for him to go ahead and develop the site without reference to any of the local conditions. We've made representations to the council, we've written letters, we've asked for intervention by the enforcement officer, we've asked the flood risk people, we've asked SEPA to get involved, and I have to tell you so far, we've had no responses from SEPA, no responses from the flood risk assistant in Perth and Kinross Council, and we're being fobbed off by the council officials. Building work on this site will eventually finish, but for one set of villagers, all faith in the statutory authorities has been lost. So that brings Lineward to a close for another week. Next week, we reveal the secret of a great tasting steak. 0 0.8. And the story of the seaweed uprising. Folk were casting around. There was something to blame for harvest failure, and they, they blamed the kelp. And don't forget, you can find out more about the programme by going to our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Scotland Outdoors. And you can download our weekly podcast. So until the same time next week, have a great weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>